This podcast is brought to you by LTAsex.com. LTA Sex. Sex positively. Welcome to Behind Closed Doors, the podcast where we teach you what it really takes to have a perfect relationship. I'm your host, Jerome Stuart Nichols, sex educator and creator of LTSX.com. You know, those glossy Instagram selfies look great, but they don't tell the whole story. There's a hell of a lot that goes on behind closed doors that make strong, healthy, and sexually satisfying relationships. From the basics of communication and fighting fair, to full-time DS relationships and navigating the politics of polyamory, Behind Closed Doors offers you the expert advice and first-hand experience you need to get and maintain the relationship that's right for you. To keep up with the show, visit ltasex.com slash Behind Closed Doors for links to everything regarding the show. Subscribe to Behind Closed Doors on iTunes or Stitcher. You can keep up with me on Twitter at NotJeromeStewart or on Tumblr at ltasex.tumblr.com. Oh, and as always, if you have questions you want to answer or have some feedback about the show, uh, send it to me, Jerome at LTASX.info, J-E-R-O-M-E at L-T-A-S-E-X dot I-N-F-O. But enough of this shilling bullshit, let's get into the sex and relationships. You know, at this time, I'm not going to call myself a liar because you know at this point what I mean when I say let's get into the sex and relationships. It means hi. I'm Jerome. Nice to talk to you guys. Um, so this episode is an interesting episode. It features uh, Garland Jamin, who is uh, a spiritual pleasure relationship coach. Uh, we talked a bit back uh, before, actually we changed formats for Behind Closed Doors, uh, and we spoke about topics like uh, the beauty of receiving pleasure, uh, is it really more uh, noble to give? We talked about communication, keeping erotic energy throughout the day, uh, the importance of saying no, and you know things like mental internal boners. Uh, when I spoke with him somewhere along the way, I think I left this recording somewhere, and then he texted me like a couple days ago. He was like, hey, yeah, so yeah, uh, what's happening? And I was like, huh thought that went up but i'm so glad that he did text me because this is a very good episode i got the chance to re-listen to it uh, a few minutes ago and i have to say that uh he is very very insightful uh you can check out his work at spiritualeros.com and it's e-r-o-s uh for eros now this episode for me is, is a very personal episode because i uh, I'm often asking him just, you know, from based on what I'm experiencing, if he has advice for these things, because at the time that we were doing this episode, me and Bubby were still uh, on the road back to feeling good with each other instead of just feeling good with each other, which it, it makes a lot of a different a lot of difference in the way that we both experience pleasure the way we like being around each other the type of sex that we like to have and we were just getting back into bdsm play and we're not doing bdsm play now as much as we did before the amnesia but he also doesn't need it as much um it's weird and it sounds like something he should talk about his therapist talk about with his therapist but before bubby's amnesia uh, we did a lot of BDSM, and it was a great way to keep his behavior in line. Uh, it was a great stress reliever for him. He'd also been really big into cutting and uh, lots of self-harm things. And I was like, well, if you're going to hurt yourself, or I'm going to hurt you for you. Because at the very least, I won't draw blood or kill you or whatever. I have your best interest as heart. Whereas, you know, when you're sad, you're just doing whatever the fuck it takes to make yourself feel better about life. And honestly, sometimes that is just unacceptable so now after the amnesia I'm finding that BDSM is just fun for us so like this morning a few minutes ago uh, when I was wrapping up listening to the show to record the intro uh, Bubby comes over and he you know I'm cuddling him we're spooning or I'm cuddling him and I start scratching his back and 
it's sort of playful is how I would describe it now it's interesting to see that we both still love BDSM but things are changing and when you listen to this episode today you'll get a glimpse at where we were at I want to say about a month or two ago uh, back at the beginning of the summer when we were still sort of feeling our way around each other and trying to figure out what it is that we liked again uh, after going through something uh, tragic, life-altering, whatever, however you want to describe it, it can be difficult to get back on track in terms of uh, figuring out what sort of sex you like because it will change. In his case, he had amnesia. So he's really rebuilding his life and his preferences and his desires and his erotic imagination from the beginning. So right now, I am his erotic imagination me but for me I'd already had an erotic imagination and and what I developed with him had been the only real different thing that I'd known in quite a while so we were both having to relearn how to have sex on top of relearning how to love each other and live with each other and on top of learning you know all these other things and it can be really difficult I know I always uh preach for self-forgiveness but this is one of those times where it's really important that if you are having trouble with this to forgive yourself there's no manual for this shit it just sort of happens to you one day and you have to keep going with life or not and it's your choice but if you keep going with life you just kind of have to find solutions for the problems that you're experiencing and if you fuck it up a couple of times, it's very likely. And I know that for a long stretch of time, I was just trying to, you know, fuck them and see if I can make that work without putting too much thought into why it wasn't working. And now that we are in a better place spiritually and emotionally and relationship wise with each other, sex is easier. But this podcast, this episode is a really honest look at putting those things together and it's more from my perspective because Bubby isn't on the show um, he's in the kitchen cooking something um, which you'll hear at the beginning of the podcast but he's this is like like I said it's more from my perspective of the perspective of the caregiver um, now that I'm thinking about it I should probably have a show where in which we talk, talk to Bubby about how things have changed for him because those are um important things to know oftentimes we don't talk to people who have been through traumas that aren't like rape and we don't even talk to rape rape trauma survivors um, that much but we don't talk to other survivors like maybe PTSD or people who have had um, amputations people who have lost a partner we don't really talk to them about what it's like to keep going after that trauma and what it's like to be sexual after that trauma but you know what sex is a part of life and if you're going to continue living then god damn it you're probably going to continue wanting to have sex and just because you had a trauma doesn't mean that your sex life is over it doesn't mean that it has that it's the same it doesn't mean that it's different it means that you have to rediscover for yourself what sex and pleasure and intimacy and romance is for you and you can't shame yourself for the changes that come you can't shame yourself for uh picking the wrong thing to try and you damn sure can't say, uh, can't shame yourself for wanting to want something knowing the difference between wanting to want something and actually wanting something is very difficult so if you find yourself you know going in the wrong direction because you want this thing maybe you want to be uh want to do this thing that is socially acceptable or you want to do this thing that's not socially acceptable but but in the predetermined way that it is acceptable like you want to do bdsm but you're like you know i should buy leather and stuff not everybody likes leather and if you do buy leather and latex and all that shit and find out you don't like it don't feel bad about that well i can't tell you how to feel rather but you should be able to forgive yourself shit happens Sometimes you take the wrong path in life, 
recovering and without a marauder's map of you know this craziness and where all the bogeys are there's no way that you're gonna get it right the first time you may not fuck up so bad but you probably won't get it right the first time and that's perfectly okay so let's get into the show with garland german german jamon jamon i am so offensive right now uh we're going to start about start out talking about receiving pleasure and you're going to receive some pleasure in your ears from this episode thanks for listening and as always let's get into the sex and relationships okay well sex relationships and my patreon campaign because that's important to say too patreon.com slash keep it sexy uh if you feel like you can donate a couple dollars to help keep lta sex online uh i've just been laid off from my job and i'm really trying to make lta sex my full-time uh, effort i don't really like to call it a job because i love what i do but if you feel like you can support patreon.com slash keep it sexy that's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash keep it sexy um one dollar a month two dollars a month anything you can is really really helpful also if you can just share uh the link around to your friends uh they may have spare funds i know that uh, a lot of people who listen to the show are in financial situations like me because most 20 year olds are in a financial situation like me and that's the main population of the people who listen to the show so if you are a person who has the ability if you get some value out of LTA sex, if you think it's worthwhile, if you think it's worth keeping around, patreon.com slash, slash keep it sexy. You can also uh, just PayPal any sort of donation you'd like to uh, paypal.com. And my uh, email address for that is jerome at ltasex.info. Sex and relationships really coming up now. <laughs> I'm I'm I woke up like this, so you know. <laughs> gotcha. Um, no, but okay. So actually, before we actually start talking, which is something new I'm going to do on on this goddamn podcast, before we get into the topics, why don't I have my guest introduce himself? Okay, so I'm gonna hand it off. To- Hello, Hello yourself. Okay. <laughs> Hello, I'm Garland Jarman, and I live in Seattle, Washington. Um, my partner and I, uh, Toby, uh, we are sex and erotic coaches. Uh, in 2014, we got our certifications in sexological body work from the Institute of Advanced Study of Human Sexuality in San Francisco. Um, I have been in Seattle for about six years. And in that time, um, I got my master's in social work from the University of Washington. Um, I had done sexual health counseling with gay, bi, and trans men of color at Lifelong AIDS Alliance and implemented uh, Gay City Health Projects uh, testing together program for couples to come in together and get tested together and create agreements and contingency plans around their sexual play. I also did a three-month gig at Madison Clinic at Harborview. Um, hospital uh, here in Seattle and wanted to after I graduated in 2013 do something that was a little bit more uh, hands-on and um, dealt with uh, people's challenges around sexuality and spirituality that was not solely focused on addiction only and a way of actually reintegrating and helping people integrate their uh, their bodies with their minds and their spirits all together. So that's me in a nutshell and what I do in short. Okay. Well, and the reason I wanted to have you on today was because I wanted to talk a bit about pleasure. Okay. Now I'm eating a Werther's right now and it's getting stuck in my teeth and I don't like that, but (laughs) I'm going to (laughs) try, I'm going to try to make it through. Um, no, um, I, I don't know. I, I have a sort of like this weird relationship with pleasure. Mm-hmm. Where I'm, to- I'm totally okay with it happening. And I'm totally okay with providing with people. But it's taken until like maybe the last six months where I've started to even become okay with just receiving pleasure. Yeah. 
um, for like the first part of my relationship with Bubby, who you know is my partner. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I it, a, a lot of the sex we did was super focused on him, uh, but now it's becoming very me centric, and I, got, I have to admit that I sort of like the change of pace. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So, it's, so it was like, go ahead. So it's becoming more of a, um, you're, you're actually learning how to receive from him? Yes. I'm learning okay. how to receive, period. Gotcha. I guess that goes hand in hand with me learning how to be taken care of, because I'm so used to taking care of people as well. Mm-hmm. I've had to allow him to be more of my assistant with everything in life. And if that means, you know, Orally servicing me for a couple of hours one day, then that's I'm gonna think I must get used to that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Do you find yeah. that a lot of people have like issues receiving pleasure? <laughs> I think in our society, in our culture, that people have issues with receiving anything. Period. Uh, be it pleasure, be it money, be it advice, be it help. Um, we just we just live in a culture that just doesn't really uh, support and encourage people learning how to receive. Um, I mean, we have the whole, you know, adage that, you know, that says it's better to give than to receive. Um, If you, if you give, you're more noble. We, 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 we pride giving as more noble than receiving. But the truth of the matter is that, you know, it, it's a, it's an entire um, cycle. It's a, it's a flow. In order to give, you need to receive. In order to receive, you need to give. There's a saying that, you know, uh, nature or the universe abhors a vacuum. And when you give out of yourself, you create space to be flooded with things that you need or want. However, if you stop that flow, then you don't get exactly what you want. You don't get what you need. And um, you prevent other people from also giving to you and blessing you with, with things that you might need or want. So yes, you know, pleasure is a huge part of that. Um, and, and it crosses a line because it, it gets to a point where it's a, it's a, it's a thing about uh, vulnerability and it's a thing about trust. I definitely have a problem with that. Yeah. A lot of people do. A lot of people do. You know, who do you trust with your mind? Who do you trust with your body? Who do you trust with your emotions? And, um, you know, and vulnerability is a huge thing, but you can learn so much. And, and vulnerability can be so healing when you realize that you don't have to do it all by yourself. Um, you can actually be supported in that. And, of course, you know, you have to find people that you can trust. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't say go out to some com- complete stranger and ask for what you need or want without actually knowing them. Um but that would be ill advised, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you might be surprised. <laughs> um, I mean, that's true. I, Bubby was basically a stranger when I met him, so yeah. I guess that sort of works. Yeah, but pleasure, yeah, we have um, one of the things that, you know, in our practice, uh, and I'm sorry, so our, our business is called Sex Spiritual Eros. And um, we Eros were, spelled E R O S for E R O S, yes. Yes, uh, we we really wanted a name that encapsulated, um, you know, both the spiritual aspect and the sexual aspect together. Um, so yeah, we have clients that come in that are just so used to giving, uh, you know, sexually with their partners, and one of the things that we really encourage um, with the one way touch that we have. So we actually touch the clients. To t- you know, clients are not. Um, you know, they're, they're not encouraged to touch us back. Actually, we, we really tell them, you know, don't. Um, primarily because of the fact that we want them to learn how to receive, learn how to really bask in um, the pleasure and the touch of another human being, uh, you know, teaching them about their bodies. So there's no obligation, you know. There's no obligation to reciprocate. And during that time, they can actually just really hone in on the now and just be very present and very mindful of what is happening in their bodies. So, I mean, that's a long, that's a long answer for your question. Yes. <laughs> it's, 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 I mean, it, it gets to the point where I was th- like, 
let me get my thoughts together before I actually open my mouth. Um, <laughs> no, it gets it gets me to one of the points that I was actually thinking about when it comes to pleasure, and one of the things I'm actually trying to work on myself um, is being mindful. Right. I know I have. I've been trying to figure out what's wrong with me or what's going on with me, rather. Wherein sometimes when the idea of sex comes up, I'll start to panic. Right. Like in my head, I'll have like a bit of anxiety about it. And sometimes it'll make me not want to do it. Sometimes I can shake it, but sometimes it'll actually make me just like not be able to focus on anything and not even enjoy the sex. Mm -hmm. And it's been interesting to work that out. I've just been trying to right now I'm at the point where I'm just trying to pay attention and see what's happening uh, right. As opposed to like trying to fix something, but I'm working on being mindful. I just don't know exactly how to uh, master that yet. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a practice. Is you know that's why they call it mindfulness practice. Um, <laughs> we you know again we're not encouraged to um, to be mindful. You know we're encouraged to interact with our community and interact with our surroundings on a very shallow and very quick microwave um, uh, mentality. You know, we get it now, we want it now. Uh, you know, patience is not a virtue anymore. Um, so being mindful can really help people to get into their bodies, help people to really hone in on what is going on in their bodies. I've, I've told, I've told clients throughout the years that, um, you know, your sexual health, your sexuality does not exist in a vacuum. Uh, it's just not, you know, a vagina or a penis or an ass or, you know, breast. Um, no, it's, it's, it's not just that, you know, sex is very, very cerebral um it's very mental um you know and a lot of things pour into that i mean think of it as a whole your sexuality as a whole that is affected by your dogs and your cats and money and housing and um you know mental health and family and friends and work and you know whether or not you had a really bad commute on the way home today <laughs> I mean, a lot of things affect your sexuality and your sexual health, and and um, and so being very mindful is is crucial to discovering what it is you like, what it is you don't like, what it is you want and don't want. I think a great experiment that a lot of couples should do um, is what we call uh, the three minute game. So essentially what that boils down to is one partner thinking what he or she wants uh, their partner to do for them, to pleasure them for three minutes. And, you know, they'll, they'll request it. And the other partner can say yes or no, or, you know, if they say no, how they would probably, you know, want to tweak it. So it works for them as well. And for three minutes, uh, the person that's requesting receives from their partner and, when the three minutes are over, they sort of sit with it, you know, not necessarily talking about it, but just sort of savoring and just thinking Savoring's about it. That's good. Yeah, thinking about what came up for them. Um, and then, in turn, you know, the, the partner that gave before would then request uh, from the receiver, and it would go back and forth like that. Uh, this is a great activity because it allows both people to be very present and mindful about what is coming up for them. There's no, you know, no shame, no judgment, no guilt, just what is coming up. And in your, in your situation, I think, you know, it would be very uh, beneficial to, when you start thinking about sex, to actually sort of have an activity around it and talk to your partner and say, hey, I'm having this. I want to explore this. Can we work out a container where I feel safe and um, not judged and, you know, a place where I can just unpack this and see what, what's going on? So I think that would be a great ac activity that you and uh, your partner can do together. I, when you were saying that, I was actually thinking if we do that, and we do, rather we did, 
but a lot of things have changed in our life <laughs> in the past um, year or so. Mm-hmm. And we're sort of more familiar with each other and we know what to do. And I think we stopped having those conversations. Yeah. But then I also remembered something that I used to do that would didn't require talking, but it sort of got my mind centered on like what was going to happen. Mm-hmm. And that is cuddling or spooning more specifically. Yeah. And that always I don't know. I don't I don't know why I forgot that actually. I have this bad habit of having these great moments of self-discovery and then because it was just a flash thought and I didn't do anything with it immediately, I forget. I think that might have been what happened there. It happens to the best of us. (laughs) And I'm definitely one of the best. God damn it. So (laughs) You're beautiful in every way, my friend. I agree. Thank you. You're so kind. No, I am... Huh, that's interesting. Are, are, can you, do you have like any other ways that people have told you that they, or that you know of that work in that same way? As far as activities partners can do or? Yeah. Like, I don't know. Watching something, uh, uh, playing with the dog or just something to do together that maybe doesn't require talking. Cause there are a lot of couples that, while they have great communication, they often don't talk very much. Right. And there are, I feel like there has to be ways for them. And me and Bubby talk a lot, but um, when it comes to sex, sometimes I don't want to talk. I just want to have like, get my mind straight. And I can't do that while I'm talking often. Mm, understood. Um, well, I'm a, I'm a huge, I'm a, I'm a huge proponent of communication. <laughs> um, I'm sure you are, because I really liked when you said that understood thing right then. That was beautiful. Yeah, thank you. I, I've been you know, telling Bubby to do that. Huh? I've been telling Bubby to do that. <laughs> yeah, I'm a, as I said, yeah, I'm a huge, I'm a huge proponent of, of communication. Um, so how do you, how do you work with couples that don't communicate? That's a very great question. <laughs> Did I stump you already? You know, I'll be honest, I, you know, it's, it's, and this is, this is my own, my own history, my, you know, just uh, revealing a little bit about myself. Um, you know, one of the things that, you know, is a huge deal breaker for me just, you know, personally is, is when my partner can't communicate um, because I can't, you know, you don't always know what to how to deal with that, you know, how do you gauge that? How do you read that? Um, and, I, and, and granted, you know, nonverbal communication is extremely important in, in, in any relationship, be it business, personal, or otherwise. Um, perhaps finding activities that you both enjoy doing, I would say. Um, like if you both enjoy watching movies or if you both enjoy cooking or if you both enjoy traveling or bowling or, you know, any other activity that ends with ING. Um, you know what? What? You gave me some ideas just then because with the cooking, I, I don't know why I immediately went from like a couple cooking in the kitchen. I had this vision in my head uh, from a couple cooking in the kitchen to like, they're being chocolate sauce drizzled on somebody's breast. But I feel like <laughs> if, you're, if you're, you know, doing some lava cakes, yeah, you know, you can, you can, you know, make some lava cakes of your own if you need to. Or, you know, if you go bowling, you know, there's a lot of balls being handled, a lot of force. True. You know, might have to, you know, j- jump off to the bathroom for a few minutes. <laughs> You know, I mean, one of the one of the things that I I, I um I encourage some of our clients is to, and this is this is sort of where um, eroticism or erotic energy sort of becomes separate from just pure sexual uh, um, outward expression. Um, you know, for instance, you know, just wearing wearing a cock ring while you're at work, or where, you know, when you're out, or even a butt plug or something that gets you in touch with 
your eroticisms gets you in touch with your body and bringing that energy into, uh, you know, just, just mundane activities that you do every single day without even thinking about them. Um, you know, I think, I think heightening that sense of awareness can definitely shift the energy in a relationship for sure. I mean, one of the things that... And you know, what's funny is that as soon as you said cock ring, I looked up on my desk and there was a cock ring. And while you were talking, I put it on. And I'm going to see if it works. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you know, you do what you need to do. You do what you need to do. I know, and it's my favorite cock ring, actually. Yeah. Yes, it's the uh, Tantus Super Stretchy Cock Ring. What is it made of? It's 100% silicone. Okay, nice, nice. Yeah, I have a, I have a very lightweight um, wooden one, actually. And uh, it's, hmm. it's from a company called Knob, N-O-B, uh, Essence. It's okay. all one word, and you can find them on knobessence.com. It's, they, they have just really nice... Um, uh, toys, you know, uh, dildos and um, prostate, you know, massage mechanisms and uh, cock rings, various sizes, various um, shades and, and types of wood. So I, I, I love it. I, I just think it's, I think it's, I think it's great. And it, and it feels, you know, it's natural. And I'm like, oh yeah, I'm just a piece of earth around my, around my penis. So... <laughs> <laughs> And what was the name of the beginning? Because I was writing, I was writing down an article. Yeah. So I actually got, I, and it was something essence. Yeah, knob N O B. So like Nancy Oscar boy. Okay. Okay. Essence. Essence. Sorry. Yeah, and it's all one word, and that's dot com. Cool. I'm I'm always looking for new sex toy companies to talk to and request free toys. Toys is so much. Yeah. Much fun. Yeah, well, I, if I should, if I can say one more thing about um, you know relationships, it is very easy to get into ruts. Um, I think we all do it. You know, we get so accustomed and so used to having that person around that even sex can become just very, uh, you know, rote and mundane, and just this is what we do. Um, so learning how you know learning how to incorporate different activities and and different um, aspects of excitement into that injecting that into uh into your play can can go a long way and also you know our tastes change over time and i think it's really important again back to the communication bit i think it's important that both parties um however many however many there are uh is very open about what they desire and what they want and that's what we teach that's what we help teach people in our in our practice you know learn how to say yes and no and stop and go but all of this is um, you know all of this is is based on what you what you desire and so we help people discover what you desire because you can't ask for what you don't know right so how do you f- yeah figure out what you desire because I, honestly I have so many desires, and sometimes I desire to desire things, but then I realize that I'm just desiring to desiring them. Desiring <laughs> them. I'm desi- God damn it, you know what I mean. I'm, desi- yeah. I'm wishing that I desired the damn thing. <laughs> 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 and I'm not actually desiring the thing, okay. which is this weird, like, sometimes I realize that I'm sort of, like, neurotic, and then... I'll, I'll move on and I'll be a perfectly functioning human being for like a couple of weeks and then something new will pop up and I'll be like, all right, I'm still out of my effing mind. So <laughs> that, but I'm glad that I'm noticing it. Now I can be more mindful of it. Look at that. I'm learning. There you go. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and with mindfulness, you know, the big thing with mindfulness is not, necessarily judging it or shaming it or guilting yourself about it, but just being, if you can, an observer. Like, okay, this is happening. <laughs> this is what's coming up in my body. And this is what has triggered me. And I either do or do not like this feeling. 
um, if I do like this feeling, how can I get more of it or nurture this? And if I don't like this feeling, then how do I change this? How do I uh, in, you know, inject something else or some level of pleasure into this to change it or just not do this anymore? Um, so one of the big things about being mindful is not judging yourself. I mean, God knows there's enough people, enough things out there in our world that's judging us and telling us that we're not good enough for A, B, C, D, or E. Um, so creating and nurturing a, a, a relationship with yourself that is compassionate and loving and kind um, is very, very crucial to mindfulness practice. And pleasure. I would agree with that. Yeah. Which actually brings us back to pleasure. Because I, <laughs> or no, desire. We were talking about desire. Because I really want to know how I can figure out what it is that I actually do desire. Because, okay, I'll be, I'll be a bit more specific. Specific. Yeah. I still have this word that's in my mouth and it's making me lisp. Um, <laughs> uh, one of the things that, that I, we used to do more of is like a bit more of like impact play, a sensation play, mm -hmm. and bondage. Mm -hmm. But... After his seizure, we sort of like we've added it back, but for some reason, I I feel like I'm not able to really tap into that. I think I think that part specifically has more to do with a mindfulness thing, uh, and maybe a bit of like anxiety about it. But I would like to know if I can tell if I'm desiring it. Or desiring to desire it. <laughs> desiring to desire it. Um, now we have to ask the question whether or not, you know, whether or not the seizure itself was, um, if you're, if you're, you know, if you're being, if you're being, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Sensitive to your partner's desire as well. I mean, do you think this is something that he would want? Now? Bobby! <laughs> Come here. Go I straight like to the source. Ask. Can I, and I feel like since he's here right now, I can just ask him. Okay, <laughs> come here. Now, he, he won't be able to hear you, Garland, but I, w I will relay what you say. Okay. <laughs> So, do you think that more impact play and sensation play and bondage is something that you would like to do? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was sort of sheepish. Yeah. yeah. Yeah? He's smiling and wiggling, so I, I take that as a good thing. Okay. So, that is something that he wants to do. And ladies and gentlemen, this is why communication is important. <laughs> Communication is important. You don't know until you... I have been thinking about it. I feel like I need to tie you up. I'm going to tie you up, Bobby. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. It's going to be fun. Okay? Okay, yeah. okay go back and watch the pasta sauce. <laughs> it's done? Awesome. Okay. <laughs> you look cute in your Batman undies. <laughs> okay. So, yes, he desire, he desire it. So what do I do with that information? Explore. In short, explore it. See, you know, um, I mean, it, it all depends on your, your, your level of relationship, um, obviously. Um, uh, so, you know, I would... Well... Yeah. Um, we are... Very physical, mm -hmm. I, I, to put it in short. So, like, do you have any things that you could recommend that we could try for that sort of sex stuff? Sex stuff, like bondage, BDSM, sensation play, stuff like that? Yes. Um, yes. I mean, there's, gosh, that's, that's a broad question. There. <laughs> there's, a, there's a myriad of things that you can try. Um, myriad of things. Um, well, what do you, well, let me ask you, what do you guys, what have you guys tried so far that's worked, that's been pleasurable? 
Well, one of my favorite things is spanking, mm-hmm. caning, mm-hmm. scratching, mm-hmm. some choking, uh, restraint handcuff thingies. Okay. They're over the door handcuffs from Pipe Dream. We talked about them a couple episodes ago, and they're fucking fantastic. Um, I'm trying to remember what else. Oh, I did want to keep trying to fist him. That I don't know why we stopped that. It takes a lot of practice, but can be very fun and spiritual. Folks. It does take a lot of practice. Yeah. I find it to be sort of relaxing. Mm-hmm. I think, you know what? I think I just, I think I like that, not because of what it's doing, because I don't really think like dirty thoughts are like, oh, this is really hot. But I'll be super focused and super into it, and I'll be super hard the entire time. Mm-hmm. And I think it's because we're being very intimate and gentle. But kind of avant-garde is not the phrase I'm looking for. It's sort of like, uh, ooh, we shouldn't be doing this. Taboo. Yeah, yeah. Taboo is the phrase I was looking for. And we're talking specifically about fisting? That's pretty cool. Yes. Okay. Yeah, fisting is... It's, it's, it's not, you know, it's not for everybody. Um, <laughs> but it can be extremely um, extremely spiritual Um, because I mean you're literally inside in a very deep deep way and um, yeah that can definitely bring up stuff in a lot of folks you know the top as well as the bottom so yeah but I but it sounds to me like you have a um, an arsenal of uh, <laughs> activities that you guys enjoy doing. I, I would just, you know, continue to explore that more because it sounds like you guys stopped several of it, several of them. And um, I would just, you know, pick them yes. up. Again, you know, now there's, there's nipple clamps as well. I mean, there's, there's you need to pick them up and throw them on the bed. <laughs> I mean, there's definitely, um, you know, CBT, um, cock and ball torture for those that are listening. Um, you know, definitely, you know... He did do that a couple of times, and he enjoyed that. Yeah, to torture, you know, um... You know, there's, torture. We have not done that. Yeah, there's, there's that. I'm gonna make a note of that. I'm gonna write it <laughs> down so I don't forget it. There, I mean, there, there are so many things that you can do. I mean, goodness. I mean, the body is capable of sensing and experiencing so much pleasure. And, um, and you know, it's 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 quite a fascinating piece of work that we live in. So. You know what I'm doing right now? Hey, sweetie. Thank you. You know what I'm doing right now? What are you doing? I'm actually making a list of all the kinky shit we like to do. And I'm going to, after we get off here, that is, or we can go over the list and see if you have any tips to make any of them better or like any adjacent ones that I'm missing out that I I would like to explore further because I suddenly am very curious and interested again. Hmm, Interesting. I have this problem where I'll have a great idea in my head, not until somebody else says it or like confirms what I was thinking before that I'll often go in that direction. So thank you for confirming and helping me go in that direction. You're welcome. I would say, however, <laughs> I, I, would, <laughs> I would say, however, that what's as important as you know the activities that you guys participate in is why you stopped in the first place. Um, I think that's I think that's very because important. Because he lost his memory and I was scared. I'm sorry. He lost his memory, and I was scared. Ah. Yes. That, that, yes. That's a huge... <laughs> huge thing. I mean, if you can't remember, then, you know, 
I mean, that's, and that's completely, that, that sounds completely normal and, um, you know, expected. So I would definitely, if you're going to start incorporating these aspects again, to clearly, clearly communicate again. I mean, is he, uh, you know, has his memory come back? Yes, completely. At this point. Okay, good, good, good. Yeah, I would go slow. I would start slow again. Start climbing the mountain from, you know, slow. I wouldn't rush into it and start, you know, jabbing all kinds of huge toys and fists and arms, you know, <laughs> inside of him. Um, well, I mean, he's talented. He can take a huge toy. He's fine. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Good, good boy. I think I gave myself the giggles. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm going to pet his head and feed him a cookie. <laughs> oh, that's another thing we need to do. I wanted to... That's one of his things that he wanted to do that I wanted to explore with him. Feeding. Feeding? Mm-hmm. Uh, he, he's like a casual gainer, so he's getting fatter. Gotcha. Gotcha. So I want to I want to ask I want to um I want to sort of loop around here because I know we started the show talking about pleasure and you had mentioned uh, that you had issues receiving and so a lot of what we've talked yes. about so far has been you giving <laughs> and granted there you is, know what's interesting yeah go ahead let me, let me get you off. yeah and granted you know there's definitely I mean I've I've topped and I have bottomed and so I definitely get pleasure out of being, um, you know, the top dom, sir, daddy, whatever. Um, so, I, you know, that's definitely a pleasure thing. It can be physical. A lot of it is actually mental. So I just wanted to, I just wanted to you know, touch base and see how you yourself are in this giving, how you yourself are, um, are, are receiving pleasure. And also, I think, you know, a, a good thing to realize you know, even for the our listening audience, is that it becomes very how should I put it blurry <laughs> um, when you start talking about top and bottom and pleasure and giving and taking and receiving, um, because he is as your sub boy. You know, what what do you call him? My bubby. He's my pup. Your pup. Okay. Um, you know, he is the one that's giving you, you know, he's the one that's relinquishing his, his, uh, uh, his power to you, trusting you to take him there. Right. So you are an essential, you are essentially receiving a lot. Um, one of his favorite things is to, one of my favorite things as well, I should say, is when he just sort of like gives me his body. I love that. Mm-hmm. It's so, hmm, I'm not sure what the word would be for it. Thrilling. That's how it feels. Yeah. Exciting. Like a surge of energy. Yeah, uh, a sort of inner yes, uh, or as my teacher would say, an inner hard-on. <laughs> inner hard-ons are great. Inner, inner boner, yeah. I need to work on my inner boner. Yes, I think most of us do. I think most of us do. I um okay. So in in response to your question mm-hmm. or your concern, for there was okay. I'll, I'll give you a bit of backstory on, on me and my sexual journey. I for a long time was in the more like submissive role, I was the bottom in my gay sex play mm-hmm. and I would say a lot of dick and no one would suck my dick because I didn't ask them to, or I didn't want to, I was uncomfortable with it. Um, I, 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 I do still like to do things to people, but as I have gotten older and have had more time with this uh, character here, who is very into giving and, if I can please him by letting him give to me, then I was doing what I wanted in the first place. It just looks different. 
Uh-huh. Um, so I've been, I had been doing that at first for him, but now um, I've grown to be comfortable with it mm-hmm. uh, enough that I'm s- coming around to wanting it myself. And or not wanting it, uh, enjoying it, allowing myself to enjoy it. Okay, it's been a it's been sort of like this long curve around to acceptance, full acceptance. Mm-hmm. Um, and when it comes to uh, the kinkier sex play, wherein we are, uh. I'm I'm the one tying him up and spanking him and choking him and kissing him, touching him, whatever. For me, he's essentially giving me his body, and I am willfully re- and happily and greedily receiving it uh, for the purpose of pre-agreed upon abuses, and I really like that. <laughs> Okay. So, is is that what was your question? Or no, it wasn't a question. I was just uh, responding to to you said you wanted to make sure that I was receiving pleasure. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. The the, the pleasure. Um, yeah. The pleasure is the pleasure is different. Uh, is is a different type of pleasure, um, because there's there's various <laughs> there's various pleasures in the world outside of outside of sex, and um, in, even in sex, you know, one partner is experiencing something very physical, and although the other partner may be phys- feeling something, may be feeling physical pleasure, um, they could probably be feeling more of a mental, uh, heartfelt, um, internal exhilaration. Um, which is what you, you know, what, what, what it sounds like you're experiencing. So, yeah, good. good. Well, yay, that's exciting. I feel like I'm doing a good job. <laughs> you know, I, I don't, I don't think there's, um, I think there's just progress. And I think, you know, as we, talk a lot about uh, experiments and everything is an experiment. Life is an experiment. And the only truly failed experiment is the one that you don't collect the data on. You don't collect the information about, and you don't take time to a savor to, you know, sort of look into it and analyze it and think about it. Um, I think if we just have experiences that we don't, look back on and try to figure out how that was for us. I think we sort of miss a great learning opportunity to grow and to evolve and to change and become better, regardless of whether or not that experience was a quote-unquote bad one or quote-unquote a good one. Um, You know, there's learning in both experiences, good or bad. And so... You know, I, I say, you know, to continue being very mindful about the, the, the exercises that you do with yourself as well as what you do with, um, with uh, you know, with Bobby. I want to, you know what, I think we will talk today. I know I said we, we don't often talk and I actually asked, you know, things for couples who don't talk, but we do talk sometimes, and I feel like I don't know why I was so hesitant to talk before. I wonder what that's about. I'll think about that later, but I feel like we should talk because I do enjoy our talks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, you know, I mean, how else are you going to learn what the other person desires and wants and needs? Um, obviously, I'm like Jean Grey. I can read his mind. <laughs> Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> I think, honestly, that's that's what a lot of people really do think. They think they can fucking read people's minds and then 
when things don't exactly work out the way they want them to, or you know, there's miscommunications on anything, then it's yeah. a major problem. One of the things, you know, one of the things that I, that keeps coming up and in, 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 in what we teach our clients about is um, and what they present with are situations where the reason why they don't ask is because they're afraid of the outcome. Um, some are some are afraid. A lot of them are afraid of the no, being rejected for what they desire and what they want. Some of them are afraid of the yes. Yes, you can have this. Yes, you can desire this. Yes, we can explore this. Yes, you can be given this. The yes, and it's it's telling when you live in a world where the yes is almost as frightening as the no. <laughs> it's an interesting it, world we live in. Huh? It's an interesting world we live in. Yeah. Um, and I think it it points to the fact that we are so used to not getting what we want. We are used to the struggle. And we have this pact, this commitment, this dedication to struggle. For whatever, quote-unquote, noble reasons. Um, and that translates into your body, into your sex, into your relationships, into your sexuality with your partners um, in a very detrimental way. If the first answer you are expecting is no, then you get shut down and um, you don't speak and you don't express and you don't emote and you don't ask. And we, and you know, in our, in our work, we really want to help people have a place where they feel safe to be vulnerable and to ask for the desires of their heart, to ask for what their body wants to feel. Um, I mean, obviously we can't, because of the context and the, the container of our work, we can't you know, oblige every single um, um, desire, uh, but we can definitely you know, work with a lot of them and you know, point them in the right direction for them to explore and get their and get their desires met and their wants met um, in other venues. So, yeah, we 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 have a we have a yes uh, uh, mentality when it, in our, in our work because uh, yes is a very 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 powerful word, and so we want people to feel the joy of and the pleasure of yes. That's that is one of the things I've actually tried to train myself to do more recently is say yes. Um, I mentioned earlier that I have like sometimes when the idea of sex will come up, I'll, I'll have a bit of anxiety about it, mm-hmm. I might panic, and I've been trying not to let that bother me too much because what I do instead is just sort of say yes when he asks or I'll just try to go with it, roll with the punches, let my emotions roll over me like a wave, like my therapist told me once. Um, And it seems to work okay, because a lot of times I end up being able to enjoy some great sex that I would have otherwise been uh, sheepish about. Yeah. No, no is a, no, think of no as, um, well, not all the time. Sometimes yes is, is not expedient. And beneficial and sometimes no is um but oftentimes we treat no as um as a cell a prison and you know that just sort of kills you know so many things and so many desires and dreams so you know one of the things even in my own life um I've, I've, I've had to get in the practice of doing and you know, it's still a practice for me is, you know, when Toby comes to me and says, hey, let's do this or let's do that or let's go here and let's do that. Um, and oftentimes I'm like, yeah, I really, I, I don't feel like leaving the house. <laughs> I don't really, no, let's, no. I do and that too. Huh? <laughs> I do that too. <laughs> yeah. And I, one of, one of our, one of our other spiritual teachers down in Tacoma, you know, she, um, she gave us a list of, of, of being messages, so B-E-I-N-G messages. And is, and one of them is saying, yes, you know, 
one of them, and she talks a lot about life scripts and the, and the scripts that we tell each other, tell ourselves internally. And uh, one of them, you know, to one of them she teaches is say yes to your life, say yes to new experiences because you're, you know, had I not said yes to so many things in my life, I would not be here. <laughs> I, I would not be here. Um, Sometimes I was forced into a yes, I will say that. Sometimes life in the universe just said, Garland, you can either, you know, be a mundane person and, then a, and live in a, a mundane existence, you know, because I'm squeezing you now, so you can fight against this if you desire, or you can go with it. You know, I'm pushing you into a yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and the universe and, and spirit, you know, will do that. We'll, we'll definitely do that to you. Um, so I'm, I'm learning how to say yes. Very well what you need. Huh? Sometimes happenstance knows very well what you need. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, no, I, I, I do that same thing. I think me and you might be similar in this way. Um, I, if I am feeling bad and not really thinking too much, everything will be no and it'll be no because I don't want to. And I'll forget that the reason why I don't want to is something totally different and something I could possibly solve. Yeah. Or the reason why I'm saying no, is just because that's my default position usually. And I actually do feel okay, but I'm just not used to feeling uh, so bright and chipper all the time. Mm -hmm. Even if it's just for like that moment. Yeah. I'm not usually particularly uh, dour, but I can be very fuzzy-headed. <laughs> that's a that's a, a problem with my, my depression. Yeah. Yeah. We. Uh, um, yeah. Yes. You know. Yes is yes is powerful. Yes is powerful, and I and I encourage our clients to say yes. I mean, especially when they're on the table and you know they're they're experiencing. Um, great pleasure, uh, f uh, physical, sexual, erotic pleasure, to say yes to it, to actually vocally say yes. And one of the things that is doing is giving them permission. Sometimes, oftentimes, clients come and all they want is permission. All they want is for someone to say, yes, it's okay, yes, you have permission, yes, please bring it, bring it all. And so I tell all my clients everything, Everything um, is welcomed in this space. Everything's all of you is welcome in this space. There's there's nothing <laughs> there's nothing uh, you know. If you feel it, you know, say it, vocalize it, experience it, explore it. Um, you know, because when you're when you're trying to con when you're trying to keep yourself in this tight cell, in this tight restraining um, constraint, you are lessening your potential for feeling uh, feeling spiritually feeling emotionally feeling uh, you know sexually and so you know we create a we create a space or we help people create a space where they feel safe and nurtured and taken care of and held um, to allow themselves to have that have that permission so and it's been great it's been great I've seen <laughs> I've seen clients just, you know, bloom and blossom so beautifully. And it's just been such a great uh, honor to to work with them. I will say that it's been an honor working with myself <laughs> <laughs> and, and watching myself grow. Yeah. I'm, actually sort of, I'm actually sort of proud of it. I've, I've, I sometimes give myself not enough credit for things mm -hmm. and I'm not a great measure of where I am versus where I want to be. Cause those are two different things. Um, and they also have two different values to them. Neither of which has to be negative, which right. is something that I'm working on trying to put into play in my actual like head. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, I don't know. It's it's been very nice to be able to 
adapt to the changes and the challenges that have come up in my life um, yeah. and my sex life more specifically because I went from being a guy who mostly um, only hooked up periodically but masturbated a lot to a guy who pretty much doesn't masturbate at all uh-huh. um, and mo- like 100% of my sexual satisfaction is coming from like partnered sex uh-huh. and that's been a uh, big change big big change for me I uh, it was difficult but I'm glad I figured it out yeah good good and you know when I um, and I know that you perhaps um, I'm assuming here that when you brought up uh, pleasure um, that you were primarily focused on sexual yes okay. when I said that yes what I what I what I desire and um, <clears throat> and I know this is I think I know you know the work that we do is pretty heavy on sex and sexuality eroticism. Um, but what I desire, my passion, is the integration of all things, um, and not just sexual pleasure separate from other types of pleasure, uh, but included in part of um, a piece of a larger puzzle. And I think one of the detriments of our culture is how we separate one thing that we can either exalt or demonize versus another thing. And so when clients come in, I'm really adamant about telling them, hey, you know, you have a life. You know, you have a partner or you have boyfriends or girlfriends. Um, you, 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 you have dogs and cats and, and you have work and you have money issues and all this other stuff, which are also a sexual being. So how can you take this energy? How can you integrate this sexuality, this eroticism? And, and when, I, when I talk about eroticism, I'm not talking about fucking. I'm not talking about penetration, uh, physical penetration of another you know, body. You know, I'm, not pers- I'm not talking that, about that per se. What I'm talking about is what excites you? And this is what I think of when I think of eroticism, the internal heart on the internal boner. What excites you about the thing that you're doing? How can you apply some level of pleasure? And it might be an actual physical activity. For instance, I'm at work. I'm you know working at my desk. I'm really you know just this is just crazy paperwork stuff. How can I apply some level of pleasure into this activity? For instance, you might want to take a moment and just tweak your nipples a little bit. Maybe, uh, you know, as you are doing now, you know, wear, wear um, a cock ring and sort of just breathe into, you know, your, your first and second chakras um, and just get in touch again with your eroticism and your sexuality and sort of bring that energy into the work that you're doing. Find some t- level of pleasure in the mundane. And I think that will change your life. I think that will change the world. Um, we call it sex magic. <laughs> you know, it goes by many, many names. But and it's, it's nothing new. I mean, I'm not saying anything that's been that's just groundbreaking and new. Um, it's been around for centuries, millennia, probably. So, um, so yeah, I, I just wanted to say, you know, although we're talking about sexual pleasure, um, what else turns you on? You know, a good piece of music a great sunset, a sunrise, you know, just being on out in nature, uh, talking with a good friend, playing with your dogs, you know, um, listening to a great, great piece of music. I mean, what turns you on in all of your ways, not just sexually? Does that make sense? That does make sense. Great. And it's making me think of, A lot of things I used to do that, again, I forgot that I've been sort of thinking about. But as soon as you said it, I was like, oh, shit, yeah, I should be doing that. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) I used to sort of have these whole, like, little scenes set up, I guess. Um, Turn on music, take showers. um, We'd wash each other. We'd play around. We'd lay around, cuddle, and take it easy. And then we'd sort of, like, get to the fucking. um, Mm -hmm. It was like a slow ramp up. And I think... I think we were doing it, doing that too much. 
and it became tiresome. So okay. I think perhaps we might need to do that when I feel like I need it. So maybe what I'm saying is that I need more variety and I should remember that. What do they call it? What do they say? Um, is it diversity or variety is the spice of life? Variety is the spice of life. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's that your, was cool. That's your takeaway line. <laughs> that's your takeaway line. <laughs> As, as, soon as, as soon as we said that, as soon as it got quiet, I was just dropped my phone straight to the floor. So I think that's a good enough signal as any to end the podcast. We've been talking for about an hour now, I think. So yeah. um, before we get out of here, you can tell everybody where to buy your stuff, hire you, say hi. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> so... Um Again, thanks for listening. Um, you can uh, reach us, Toby and I, at www.spiritualeros.com. And that's all one word, spiritualeros.com. Uh, we are currently in Seattle, Washington. That's where we actually practice. Um, if you're in the area or if you're passing through, uh, definitely drop us a line. Give us a call. Um, we usually do a 30-minute um, sometimes longer because people need to talk a little longer um, intake on the phone or come by and, and look at the space so you get acquainted with you know the space um, and uh, yeah I mean we work with everyone LGBTQI straight and otherwise you know if you have a partner or if you're single or if you're in a triad or, or you know foursome or whatever uh, we, we want to work with everyone that has a body and, um, and wants to uh, explore more of their sexuality and eroticism. So hit us up. We also do Skype sessions. Um, I'll, obviously, you know, I can't reach through the computer and, you know, um, have hands-on um, exploration with you. But if you feel like, uh, you know, talking and or having some level of Skype interaction would be benefit for you, beneficial for you, then please hit us up. And we would love to talk and work with you and figure out how we can best... Uh, help you become your full integrated erotic self. Full integrated erotic self sounds like an awesome band name. <laughs> or like the next Daft Punk album. Yeah. And she, so we're also, sorry, we're also on Facebook. So check us out, Spiritual Eros. Uh, we're on Twitter at Spiritual Eros. Um, and we are uh, on Tumblr, Spiritual Eros. <laughs> And, um, and and our email is spiritual.eros at gmail.com. It's very easy. Okay. Oh, and I will, I will just say, I will <laughs> just say, I really like wearing the cock ring. I feel much better about life. <laughs> You're very, very nice. Well. Yeah. Awesome. So now I can at least vouch for... For, for some some greatness that you hold in your wisdom. <laughs> well, you know, I'm just trying to give people the same tools and experiences that I I um, I explore on my own. So, you know, we're all walking this path together. We are walking this path together, and that's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks so much for being on the show. It was Thanks a great time. Thanks for I hope having. to have you back soon. Yes, definitely. Hopefully it's not so rainy outside, so five minutes into the show, thunder is not <laughs> blaring in my ears. But you know what? I I like the sort of happy yet subdued tone of this episode. I think I'm going to love it. I think I'm going to get some tea. I think I'm going to get some tea. In yeah. order to get some tea, I have to say goodbye to you people. Peace out.